Hi, I'm Shane with eTrailer.com. Today you're going to be taking a look at, I'm going to walk through the installation of the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness on your 2018 Jeep JL Wrangler. There's a lot of reasons to add wiring to a vehicle. Uh, you have a hitch, you're putting on a cargo carrier. The cargo carrier that sits here is going to cover your license plate. Most states require two plates on the vehicle. If it covers that plate, the cargo carrier, some cargo carriers, will have an extra bracket that you can remove the license plate here, move it to the back of the cargo carrier, but it's also going to require a light. If it requires a light, it's going to require wiring. That wiring will plug into your cargo carrier to give that license plate light so you're legal. The cargo carrier is going to allow you to move stuff out of the vehicle. Maybe you're pulling a trailer, maybe you have a small boat, or maybe a small camper. This is going to allow that trailer or camper to receive light functions from your vehicle so that you're legal and safe. Nice thing about this wiring harness is going to give you a converter box. There's going to be a converter box on it. And what that converter box does is it protects your factory wiring from any backfeed if the trailer wiring has a short. It's also going to have a power wire that needs to be ran up to the battery. Uh, a lot of people ask, why do you need a power wire if this wiring harness connects directly into factory wiring? Well, the reason is, if you don't, the power that you're giving to your trailer lights, you're drawing it from your tail lights themselves. And what that does is it dims your lights. With having the power wire up to the front, the only thing we need, or we're getting, is the signal from the lights, we're getting the power from the battery. It's gonna give you the four pole plug, it's gonna give you your, your brake signal, your turn signals, and your running lights, and it's gonna give you five amps per circuit for your stop and turn signal, 7.5 amps per circuit for your tail lights. Wiring harness is also going to have an attached dust cap. This is going to help keep dirt and debris and moisture from getting on your connections. Uh, you'll notice it's on a bracket here. This bracket does not come with the wiring kit, so I highly recommend it. This is going to help give your wiring a more permanent mounting location. You can find it here at eTrailer.com. Now, if you have a hitch uh, that does not have the pre-welded bracket on it to mount this four-pole bracket on, what you can do is you can pick up a long bracket and your four pole bracket. This bracket is gonna come with a clamp and it's gonna clamp right on the bottom of your frame rail like this. And you'll connect this four pole bracket right on the end and that gives your wiring a more permanent mounting location. Now that we've taken a look at some of the features, let me show you how to get it installed. Starter installation, we need to remove our tail lights. On the inside of the vehicle, there's gonna be a little cap. We're gonna remove the cap and there's gonna be a spring loaded nut We'll pop the cap off. And then right here, we're gonna have a spring-loaded nut or bolt. 10 millimeter socket, we'll remove it. Take our light, and pull it back, and out. Pull up on the red clip disconnect the wiring. Like that. And you're going to repeat the same process on the passenger side. We're going to take our wiring harness, green wire, we're going to feed down through the pocket for the housing, right down through the opening to the bottom of the vehicle. You're gonna have a bundle of black wire. This is your power wire that we have to run up to the battery. Instead of going, taking this whole thing and going down through, we're gonna take one end and come back up. We're gonna take one of our yellow heat shrink butt connectors. We're gonna put it on the black wire coming out of our wiring harness. We're gonna take the black wire that we just fed up, strip back the ends. and add it onto the other end. And we'll take our heat source and shrink up the bucket. I'm going to take my converter box. We're going to have some two-sided sticky tape. In the back. Press it into place. I'm going to mount it straight down at the bottom. Make sure 
three. Push it. Just like that. Mount on ground wire. We're on my ground wire. Straight back like that. As long as we're on metal, we'll be good. wiring hook it in line with our factory plug like that and we can reinstall our tail light underneath the vehicle you can see where my wires came out of the tail light pocket I need to get my green wire over to the passenger side. So what I did is went over top of my frame rail, 11 millimeter socket. I took down the two nuts that are holding up this edge of my heat shield, pull it down, tuck my wire up underneath, and then reinstalled the two nuts. Ran over the passenger side. There's gonna be a pocket, same type of place, right here on the inside. I took my wire plug and shoved it up inside of there. Now when I go up top, I can pull my wires in, connect to my tail light the same way I did on the driver's side. For my four pole wire, went over top of the frame rail. And what I did is I bundled it up and zip tied it right up on top here. Ran my four pole plug right here to the bottom of my hitch. Now to run my power wire from the back of the vehicle to the front, uh, we need to make sure we're staying away from anything or hot or moving. I like to, in Jeeps, run them through the frame rails because to use the vehicle off-roading is gonna protect the wire and there's several holes throughout the Jeep so that water will drain out if you happen to go through water uh, that makes it easy to run. You will need something a little bit stiff. I use some airline tube. If you have a wire hanger or something like that, what I did is I started right here and I just worked it to every couple holes, pulled my wire through and just worked my way all the way to the front all the way up to this large hole. What I did is my airline tube, I've got it pushed up. I'm gonna take my wire and pull it up and then I'm gonna have to run it across because my battery is on my passenger side. So my wire came up right back here. I went around my brake booster, stuck it behind the brackets or fed it behind these two brackets. Went right across the firewall right here. Went behind that first bracket. So tied it to this factory wiring here. Keep it tight. Now we can add on our fuse holder and connect it to the battery. Fuse holder is going to look like this. We're going to cut it in half. Strip back both ends. Add a ring terminal on one. Heat shrink butt connector on the other. Put our power wire down to size. Strip it back. And on your fuse holder with the butt connector onto the black wire. We'll take our heat source, the shrink cover butt connector, the same way we did the one on the back. And we connect a ring terminal to our battery post. Once you've made your connection to your positive side of your battery, then you can add your fuse. Once you've got your fuse in, test your wiring, make sure everything's working correctly and you're ready to go.
Now we'll test out our wiring using part number I26. Running lights, brake lights, left turn, right turn. Once you've tested your wiring, you know everything's working correctly, you're ready to go. Again, I'm Shane with eTrailer.com. I hope this video has helped you, whether you're still deciding or installing the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness on your 2018 Jeep JL Wrangler.